My People is pleased to present 40 Days 40 Fintechs, an initiative under its Include Everyone program, as it continues to lead the way in advocacy for the creation and dissemination of technology that enables financial inclusivity. The 40 Days 40 Fintechs is shining a spotlight on those that are breaking down digital barriers and bringing millions more on the continent into the transactional space and transforming their lives for the better. My name is James Pierohanga. I'm currently the general manager of Roxio Data Center, um, Uganda. Uh, so Roxio Data Center is the first tier three data center in the country. Um, our data center is carrier neutral. Uh, this means that we connect any kind of fiber provider uh, to our data center. It's also cloud neutral means that we open up for any cloud service providers uh, who are willing to extend their cloud platforms um, into our facility to be able to actually service the SME and corporate needs. Um, maybe a data center in general uh, for the purpose of comprehension is it's what you would say a, a very big building um, that is well kitted with very um, stable power. Um, when I talk about stability, I'm talking about multiple power sources. I'm talking about uh, multiple cooling um, solutions. I'm talking about endless connectivity options that you can provide to your customers and, and a lot of white space on the floor that you can actually use uh, for people to collocate their equipment. Uh, collocation is bringing your equipment as a, either a disaster recovery location or a primary location and putting it uh, into a facility and we power it up for you, uh, connect you to the connectivity partners and basically you can run an off-site location. Some people prefer to use it as a primary center, others prefer to use it as a secondary location or a disaster recovery location. Uh, data centers in general have become the center stage of the digital revolution. Uh, at the second, uh, also, they are the heartbeat of the ecosystem that basically the internet is. So you find that if anyone is actually looking to uh, be part of the growing um, fourth industrial revolution and have the equipment in a location that is predictable, that is stable, um, that is future-proof, um, a data center is a place you want to be. Um, historically, there's been, of course, multiple type of data center solutions in the market. Um, a lot of them were in-house. Uh, enterprises have small facilities, 10 racks, maybe 20 racks. Telcos have maybe 50 racks, some even to 100 racks, uh, but mostly for their own needs. And then if a customer needs a service, then they will always um, kind of look around for that. But the evolution of carrier neutral data centers and certified data centers like we have um, has basically been the cornerstone of a lot of development in the internet revolution uh, when you look at um, the eastern markets, the western markets like um, the Americas, uh, Europe, Asia, uh, where internet has become the central driver of economies. Uh, data centers have basically been the ones that have driven it. They satisfy needs for telcos, enterprises, banks, uh, SMEs, especially through cloud, uh, global career partners, content networks, over-the-top companies, payment solutions providers, name it. Everyone can benefit from a data center because a connected world is basically the future. So the project for the Ruxio Data Center in Uganda, and by the way, this is a flagship data center for our group, for Ruxio Group, uh, started in 2018. Um, the process involved, of course, planning, architecture designs, um, logical designs, a lot of professionals getting involved, um, soil samples, it's, the story is very long. Um, we started construction in 2019, uh, March. Um, then we had issues, of course, in 2020 with the uh, COVID pandemic. So we were slowed down in terms of construction. We were projected to go live in 2020, but we eventually came live in 2021. Uh, we launched on the 24th of May, 2021, uh, and now we're ready for business, we're ready for operations. Um, we have done a lot of pre-sales effort, so we actually have already a lot of customers signed up, uh, mostly financial services institutions, telecoms, uh, internet service providers, some cloud providers. Um, so basically, the ecosystem is starting to grow. We also have the internet exchange point um, at Raxio. Raxio Data Center Uganda is the first um, of 12 countries that we're looking to roll out. We've already broken ground in Ethiopia uh, as our second data center, uh, and construction is about to start in Kinshasa as our third data center. We've announced Mozambique, Maputo as the fourth, uh, and the strategy we're going with is basically in some countries we will have two sites, Uganda being one of them, so we're already looking at Traxio UG2 that we're looking to put maybe in Entebbe, um, but we're still in the process of site selection. Uh, but some of the smaller economies uh, will have one site. The bigger ones will be looking at having um, two sites. So our roadmap involves countries like Tanzania, Zambia, 
um, Namibia as part of the ones who want to roll out, of the, of the first 12 sites that we want to roll out in the next three years. Fintechs are by nature are basically financial technical companies. And fintechs have basically leveraged the existence of technology to provide financial services. So you might say that fintechs are sort of the bridge uh, between the finance and the telecom world. Now, everything around fintechs is about um, significantly disrupt. Um, and fintechs in this region has been driven by uh, mobile money and mobile payments and just the adoption of, you know, of technology to do business. Now, everything around that is, of course, data driven. It's connectivity driven. It's being able to access uh, and create a bridge between the consumer um, and the supplier. So what data centers do is basically they are the home for anything data. So if you are a fintech and you're providing a service to the consumer market, to the SME market, the enterprise market, um, you are bridging a gap between the market and another given end, which is basically the supplier. And everything right now is driven by data, data analytics, um, cloud computing for your storage, and what we're basically providing is a home for all this data. Our primary solutions are basically co-location and cross-connect. Now, let's go a bit deeper into this. So you imagine that you're a fintech. Um, you, ha you, you either are going to take up a cloud service somewhere, um, sometimes you don't even know where it is, uh, or you're going to have your in-house um, servers. So what we do is we provide uh, an environment where if you're using your own in-house servers, you can bring your servers and put them in our facility, uh, of course, for much better service level uh, to provide to your customers, or you can buy a cloud service that is actually um, sitting in our data center with one of our cloud service providers or partners. Even the current service providers that you're using as a fintech, for example, Amazon Web Service or Microsoft Azure, we are talking with them and Google as well to be able to extend their global networks into Uganda. Because finally in the country, we've got a facility that can actually meet their global standards. So they are also interested in coming to Uganda to provide cloud services um, to fintechs and other companies in Uganda. However, even as it is right now, you can either come and take up space for yourself as co-location, or you can tap into the cloud services that our, our cloud service partners can provide. The second service that you can leverage is really now when you think about how the ecosystem works, is as a fintech, your biggest challenge is always that you want to integrate or aggregate. So you're looking to integrate with either a telecom company or a banking um, company that are basically some of the enablers of fintech. Now, currently you find that some people have had a challenge of integration because you have to go and talk to the telecom, to the bank, so that you can peer directly with them. What brings all this to uh, you know, an amazing end is the fact that we have the internet exchange point coming into Raksha Data Center, which is going to enable direct peering between um, fintechs and banks, fintechs and telcos, fintechs and government organizations, so you can cross-connect with them under the same roof. So you no longer have to peer with them over the internet uh, with the risk of cyber security um, challenges that, you, that come with it, the risk of red tape, uh, the risk of bureaucracy, uh, the risk of uh, performance and latency. Now you can actually peer with them directly uh, in the same building or the same roof. The challenges are multiple. Um, you, we can start from public, the, the public office side. Uh, so there's a need, obviously, for government to be more involved in regulation, in compliance, um, in making sure they, divide, they define uh, laws that can enable the growth uh, of, the, of the digital economy. Uh, there is an effort so far. You would say the Data Protection and Privacy Act is one of them. Um, the current move taken by the central bank to build a national payments gateway is another one of them. Um, but there is a, a huge, a lot more ways that the government can enable fintechs to exist. Uh, obviously, we're in a very young economy and a very innovative economy, so you find a lot of the people we have are youthful and entrepreneurial and ICT um, capable. But we need the government to take a deliberate effort, first of all, to define laws and define taxation that enables fintechs to take off. So there's some work that has to be done, bringing the, 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 the right regulation and compliance rules to play. The second issue we have is, of course, the issue of trust. Uh, a lot of people are just growing to learn to trust uh, what you'd say the e-currency. Uh, they're just getting to accept it, they're getting to adopt it. Um, and e-currency requires devices, it requires mobile network penetration, um, it requires internet penetration, it requires device penetration. Um, so there is a gap that needs to be filled by increasing on how many uh, devices are available uh, on the market that people can, the market can actually use to consume the product. 
um, there's a need to improve on internet penetration. We are in a country of 46 million. We only have about 18 connected. Um, so we need to, and a lot of those 18 also, you find that there's a lot of multiple SIM holders. The internet penetration is still, I think, below 5 million. So there's a huge amount of gap that needs to be covered uh, in terms of penetration to be able to have, you know, a lot of people connected. Um, of course, without going into details of things like, you know, power availability when you go to the grassroots. Um, the third issue that I think is um, maybe bringing a, a bit of a, challenges around uh, internet adoption that of course leads into the, you know the digital growth uh, would be coming from um, what you'd say the enabling environment that is between the providers um, a lot of people I think for the purpose of also security cyber cyber security especially uh, would prefer to deal with a few aggregators and through those aggregators then you onward go downwards and have people connecting to the aggregators and, and being able to provide the service. Now, that, of course, created a cartel. So the guys who already have the connections to the telcos and the banks, um, the big <laughs> value-added service providers, had some ways of discouraging the smaller guys from coming in or leveraging high pricing, meaning that at the end of the day, by the time I'm providing a service as a fintech to the consumer, the price I can give them is too high because I have to onward pay an aggregator who onward pays the telco, who onward pays the, <laughs> you know, the, the taxation. So there's too many chains. Um, so there's a need to reduce on how many steps and making it as easy as possible and free to basically uh, integrate. And of course, the final thing is the risks around uh, cybersecurity in terms of e-transactions. Um, a lot of people are, have been subjected to, to hacks. A lot of people have been um, have faced uh, what you'd say frauds and scams uh, around you know mobile payments and mobile money um, and any kind of you know e-currency. Um, so that has kind of discouraged participation uh, in some of the areas. Maybe as a cherry on top, I would say that um, they, we are a bit slow to adopt to some of the newer technologies that could drive uh, fintechs, for example, uh, blockchain um, and crypto, cryptocurrency, uh, which we are seeing taking off everywhere else in the world. Um, so right now, um, partly it's because there's been no facilities that you can Bitcoin mine from. Um, so again, Raxio being a facility that's available with stable power, a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies will, will be starting to grow uh, in the region. Um, a lot of blockchain for, you know, for mining um, will also be um, able to be hosted in, in, in Raxio. So I think in general, those are the challenges that I see, and I think to address them is, again, the same things that I've, I've raised in there. What are the opportunities? Um, I think the opportunities come from um, being able to think forward. Now, um, fintechs in general generate a lot of data uh, because of the transactions, because of the consumers and the customers um, that they're actually uh, dealing with on a, on a regular basis. So they know the people's phone numbers, email addresses, locations, um, and this data, and also like what they consume and what they're buying and paying for. So this kind of data can be very, very powerful for analytics and being able to guide uh, suppliers, producers, finance planners, analysts, to be able to actually build the right kind of products um, and to be able to you know, position. I think the real big opportunity, especially for FinTech, is in trying to tighten the big data analytics that is available for them because of the information that they have um, into the whole product development chain and the distribution chain. If you want, um, first of all, to visit Raxio, we are in Naman Industrial Park. Um, we are um, on block 113. Uh, but we have signage, so you can actually follow the signs. Uh, we have a map on our website, which is www.roxiogroup.com. Uh, you just select Uganda because all our countries are on the same website. Um, we are on Instagram, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook. Um, so you can actually follow Raxio Uganda uh, from any of those platforms as well as LinkedIn. 40 Days 40 Fintechs is presented in prior partnership with Crosslake Technologies, Modus Box, Modular Foundation and Level 1 Projects.